Hey everybody, Yankee here. I want to address a comment I made in a video yesterday. Uh, wink, wink, it wasn't actually yesterday. It was today, but I already had this video planned, so I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm just telling you that so you don't think I'm wearing the same clothes two days in a row and you think I stink because of that. Well, I might stink, but it's not because of that. Uh, so I just want to let you know that, you know, a little look behind the curtain, you know, you know, the reality behind the magic, so to speak. But I want to address something I said in that video yesterday. I said, if you live in a state like me, like Washington, not a state like me, if you live in a state like I do, like Washington, a state like me would be a state of confusion, I guess. Uh, but if you live in a state like Washington, which I do, last time I checked, uh, if there's an assault weapons ban proposed, which there is here every year, and I file out, uh, fill out my Form 1 and send it in for my PTR to get it SBR'd for free with the free tax stamp, and then that law passes before that uh, form is approved, well, it'll get an automatic rejection from the ATF. They'll have no choice once it's enacted, the assault weapons ban, to uh, reject every uh, SBR form, every form one. So I would be rejected. I would get a, a, a declined. And I said in that video, but don't worry, you're not going to be a felon. Not from that. They're not going to come get you. That's one of the things the... GOA has been saying, ooh, boo, if you file for that free tax stamp instead of fighting to overturn the rule so that we can keep making pistol braces, they're going to come get you with that information. And one, they made up a lot of fake stuff to scare you, like things that aren't true, not really the law, not how things work. Like, oh, it's going to be retroactive. You imported a legal SBR if you bought a pistol with a brace on it. That's garbage. No lawyer would ever tell you that. Uh, so just... That's junk, and they're making up a lot of junk to scare you. And one of the ones is, if you fill out the brace, and it's not uh, cleared in 88 days, if you fill out the Form 1 that doesn't clear in 88 days, you're going to get an automatic denial, and you're going to be a felon. Same thing with if the assault weapons ba uh, ban passed in my state. And then they denied me. I'd be a felon. That's the thing they're telling people to scare them. Because remember, they want to keep you scared and angry so you don't pay attention to they're just sucking your money and not doing anything. Except for defending the industry that profits off infringements. So that is all bunk. And there's a reason that's bunk. Well, for one, let's deal with this 88-day rule they've been talking about. That really doesn't require a lot of attention because that's for 4473s. That's because the government can't keep files like that on record for more than 90 days. So at 88 days, they close the cases. That means if your case hasn't been closed within 88 days of it actually being filed, like they actually perform the, the background check, like they do run your background today and for some reason it doesn't get closed for 88 days. Like they request information from a state and they don't give it or your, back, or your uh, address doesn't match and they ask you for clarification and you don't give it. Well, they'll keep that open up until it hits 88 days and then they close it. You are basically rejected. Now, if you're filling out a 4473 buying a gun, well, after 72 hours, the dealer can give you the gun. And if the case just closes because of the deadline and you've been given the gun, the ATF will do nothing. Now, if you get declared uh, a prohibited person after three days and the dealer has given you the gun, they can come after you because you are now a prohibited person and they've checked and you have the gun. So if you're not a prohibited person, you got nothing to worry about about the 88-day rule. And let's say, because one, it doesn't apply to Form 1s and Form 4s because they keep that information long-term. They are not required to get rid of those records, period. They keep those. That's why you have to fill out that extra form. So the 88-day rule doesn't even apply to them. But let's say it does apply. You fill out a Form 1, you fill out a Form 4, and 88 days goes by and it expires. What happens? Well, you just don't get your tax stamp. And then it'll be up to you to know, well, I don't have a tax stamp, so I can't keep this in SBR configuration, wink, wink, because I want to abide by the law, wink, wink. And please get the message, people. But you don't get declared a felon. And they can't even come looking for you. Even if they f have reason to believe you are an uh, Ill, a person who is prohibited from building an SBR, they can't come after you legally. And here's the thing. If you're not a prohibited person, you don't even have to worry about this. But let's look at worst case scenario. You're a prohibited person. They determine you're a prohibited person. All they can do is say, no, you can't manufacture an SBR. 
if you can't come after you. And here's why. Remember that 1968 Gun Control Act? Well, it's a horrible fucking thing if you've never read it, but there is one good thing in it, and that is U.S. Code 5848, Restrictive Use of Information. This is the law of the land. Has been since 1968. It is stood the challenge of time and etc. So one thing in the actual law that is good. And it says, basically, to, to tie it up for you, I don't want to read the whole law for you, but I will tell you what it says. It, and I'm actually going to read it here from uh, a, a, an article that analyzed the rule and broke it down into plain English. This law prohibits the ATF or any lo other law enforcement agency from using any information submitted on any form that is part of compl uh, complying with the 1968 Gun Control Act or NFA rules Prevent, prevents them from using any information on that, name anything, in any criminal filings or actions. Neither the ATF nor any other law enforcement agency can use this information in any way if it is being provided to comply with the NFA. Period. They can't come investigate you. They definitely can't come seize your property. They can't even use it as justification to get a warrant. They can't do anything. They can't even use it as justification to come to your house and ask if they can see your stuff. Which if they did, you would just say no, I would hope. You'd be that smart. But they can't do any of that. That's the law. It's codified. The only exception to that is if you lie on the Form 1 or Form 4. Because that is a charge in itself, lying to a federal agency. Don't lie. You have nothing to worry about. And like it says here in this article, uh, right here it says that these companies that are telling you this, that are saying that, hey, if you take a chance, you could go to jail, they are lying to you. They are doing this to get you to join, donate, click, subscribe, etc. They are not telling you the truth. And that is absolutely true. They are not telling you the truth because they want you to donate, click, you know, watch their video, etc. They want to frighten you. Boo! Don't pay attention to what's really going on. Be scared and angry about this unreal thing, you know. So, no, you're not at risk at being a criminal because you get denied. Even if that 88-day thing was a rule, which it isn't for Form 1s and Form 4s, even if you got denied... They can't use any of that information against you by law, a long-standing law. So all that, they're going to well, use that as evidence to come get you. That's garbage. It's a lie. All you have to do is look through history. How many people that have ever been denied on a Form 1 or Form 4, and it happens every day, have ever been charged with anything? Zero. Because the government can't. Their hands are tied. Actually, filling out that Form 1 or Form 4 is a protection in some ways. It almost makes it to where if you fill it out and send it in and you get denied, it makes it harder for them to investigate you than if they just suspect you're doing it. I had a lawyer tell me that. And now it creates an extra hoop they have to jump through to where they can appear like they're not violating the law. And that's very hard. Because once you've taken certain steps, it makes it look like they're violating the law, even if they already had prior suspicion. So it actually is a protection in some ways. I've had multiple uh, legal officials tell me that. So this whole 88-day rule thing, it's garbage. This whole, if you get an automatic denial, you're a felon, that's garbage. First, let's remember, you got to be uh, tried, you got to be charged, tried, convicted, and then you're a felon. You're never a felon just because you're not complying. You're just non-compliant. And the reason most of those people aren't felons is because the government doesn't want to try those cases because it would get a lot of laws overturned once people had standing. So your chances of getting charged next to zero. So don't worry about things like this. Don't listen to the fear-mongering from the GOA and their mouthpieces. Start paying attention to the things that are real and say, hey, GOA. Instead of fighting for the people who make pistol braces, why aren't you fighting to overturn the NFA? Every penny you have in your coffers right now should be going out to fight the NFA. We're in a position now where we can win. Why isn't every dime you have being spent to tackle the NRA while we have the wind at our back? The answer to that is, well, that's not profitable for us. 
And that would definitely not be profitable for us in the long run. And we got a lot of salaries to pay, a lot of expenses to pay, a lot of mouthpieces to pay. So stop listening to the lies. Start being informed. Do your research. Don't be frightened sheep. Be thinking adults who make decisions for yourself, a decision to either comply or not comply. Like I said, that's your choice. And I support whichever one you make. But do it as an informed, mature individual, not as a frightened, like I said, little sheep.